What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and how to use indicators from multiple time frames. So this idea came from, again, Zabra. He made a fork from the Gecko branch and then he had created this strategy called timeframes.js and essentially what he said it does is demonstrates using Candle Batcher to create strategies that op operates on multiple time frames. And this is one of those things where I think a lot of people request for it. And in all honesty, actually, this is something that doesn't require X Mike, the creator of uh, Gecko, to actually do anything because this is actually you can something that you just have to change in, in the strategy itself to take advantage of. So essentially, what it is is people want a way to use, let's say, in this example here, I have the RSI here, so and I have the RSI for the uh, uh, one hour time frame. So let's say that you want to use the RSI indicator, not just for the one hour time frame, but you want to use it for also the five minute time frame. So you want to use two different time frames or maybe two or more different time frames to confirm whether or not a trend is happening or some other you know, way for you to do confirmation because a lot of um, day traders and swing traders actually use multiple time frames to confirm a particular trend. Within Gecko right now, you really can't do that because let's go back in here. Let's look at the RSI bull bear ADX strategy, for example. You actually just set, add the indicator right here. Right? You add the uh, indicator that it needs. Obviously, it needs the SMA in addition to RSI, and you determine the interval. But the candle size, again, the candle size is the time frame that is required. You don't set that in here, obviously. You set that in the config file right here. So you have to set it to candle size right here, you would set it to, let's say if you want to use a one hour time frame, you would set the candle size to 60 and that's it. So then you can't use multiple time frames because if you want to use the RSI for the five minute time frame and the 60 minute time frame, it just won't work because you are forced to set this one candle size to one particular time frame. So you're not able to use multiple time frames. What Zabra did is he actually modified he actually didn't, he didn't modify anything. All he did was, if you go to the strategy he has here, which he, again is called timeframes.js, and I actually have it open right here. He doesn't actually use the this.indicator, this.addIndicator. He instantiates new MACD indicators in his strategy because he uses MACD in his particular strategy for timeframes.js. I think basically it needs to have both the MACD 15 minutes in his case here, 15 and 30 minutes converging on a certain point before it actually would do the buy and sells. So that's what his strategy does. And what he actually again uses is um, he calls, um, he creates two MACD indicators within here. And then it, it, each of them would use the MACD parameters, but then each of them get updated differently. So they get updated in the 15 minute and the 30 minute time interval. So how does he do that? So I'm going to break it down and show you what he exactly does in the code wise. So basically, all he does is he declares the indicators as new global variables. So again, the first thing he does is he sets a constant candle batcher equals to require. So candle batcher is something that's part of Gecko. And what it does is that it lets you do the second thing. So first thing it says, internally, we only use one minute candles. This can easily convert them to any desired size. But basically, Gecko itself uses one minute candles. And through the this dot indicator section, it actually follows what candle size you use and it batches them together. Whatever time frame you're setting, candle batcher is still using one minute candles and it actually batches these candles together to the whatever time frame you want. So that's why it's called candle batcher, this um, particular JavaScript file. So in this case, it adds one minute of candles and then if you set it to, let's say the candle should be 60 minutes, it'll batch it into a 60, it'll batch 60 one minute candles into one candle, a, into one 60 minute candle. And that's basically what the candle batcher does. So, and again, it's the, that's the first thing it does. The other thing is it acts as a fake stream, takes one minute candles as input and emits bigger candles. So that's the other thing it does. So you actually can call the function itself and that's what he does here. He basically allow you to he set a constant for a candle batcher so that you can actually call this function and he does it over here, right here, new candle batcher. So the new candle batcher lets you set how big a candle should be created for the, uh, from the batch. So in this case, it's 15 minutes. And then this gets a little tricky in here, the way he's have it set up. So he, 
he basically doubles the 15 minute candle to make it dirty, which was very confusing for me to figure out and understand. And I'm not going to use that in my particular strategy. But going back in here, you have to create a constant for candle batcher to actually let you call candle batcher within your strategy. In the init uh, function here, you just have to declare the batcher and the size of the candle. So I again, I mentioned 15 minutes and 30 minutes for his indicators. It could be anything for yours. It could be like five minutes, 10 minutes, 30, whatever it is that, uh, whatever interval you want to use, whatever time frame you want to use. And then the next thing you have to do is add a callback to call uh, update xx function. So let's go back into strategy in here. So he has this callback, this is um, this batcher 15.on. But batcher 15 minutes, 15 minutes. So this batcher will again batch one minute candles into 15 can into 15 minute candles. And dot on, what it does is when it actually hits that mark, when when they're actually 15 uh, candles, they'll batch together, then it'll call this function. So the dot on actually if you look into it from the JavaScript dot on method, literally what it's it's like an event function. So when something actually happens, that's when it gets called. So in this particular example they have in here, it says that you know if someone clicks on um, this particular element you have in, in the JavaScript, then it will, it will send out this alert. Obviously, we're not working with web elements in here. We're, we're working with uh, Node.js components. So that's why it's, it's, it's not exactly the same, but it's the same idea where, you know, when something actually happens, then actually we'll um, call this other function. So in this case in here, so when it hits 15 minute, uh, when it batches together a 15 minute candle, then it'll call the update function. In the update function, you have to write the candle, so you have to write the candle out, and then you have to uh, flush the you have to flush the batcher. So that's basically it. It's but it's very it's like a different way to think about it. So there is definitely um, additional programming involved just to understand and to create a strategy that works quite a bit differently than how you normally create a strategy within Gecko. So I created this strategy because. This again, like you, you guys can definitely try to use his time frame strategy um, to, to to see if it works for you to play around with it. One thing I do want to point out though, his time frame strategy supposedly doesn't work because uh, someone actually made a pull request saying that added flush calls on the batchers. Again, I mentioned the batch. Uh, you have to call the uh, batcher that flush function. His code doesn't call it, so someone else uh, made a pull request and mentioned that you know if you don't call those uh, flush functions. So what happened is the current behavior is the batcher doesn't emit the on candle event due to the missing flush call. Hence the update 15 and update 30 handlers are never called. And if they're never called, then the function doesn't work. This whole strategy doesn't work. So you need to call and make the flush calls. So at least that's my understanding. This guy could be wrong, but so far from what I tested, it does work. So back to the strategy I've written. And for my strategy here, I'm using, I, I call it RSI fall. I mean, not probably not the greatest name, uh, but anyway, the strategy is this strategy will buy when hourly RSI is oversold and five minute RSI is overbought. So indicating trend reversal. It will sell when RSI uh, when hourly RSI is overbought or if hourly RSI stalls after trend turns bullish. So essentially this is what happens. So like this is a good example right here. So it fell right through, let's say this is um oversold territory, so it fell right onto here. So it won't actually buy until the five minute will um will go to the overbought territory but the, again the idea is when the five minutes goes to overbought territory it means that the trend has turned bullish and you want to buy in at that point in time you see through the five minute rsi that the price is no longer falling that it's like actually there's a uh, upward turn and it's a good time to buy and hopefully you know it'll buy and it'll turn bullish and it will stay bullish and then you'll sell right around here when it actually passes the overbought territory so on August 14 at 1 a.m. UTC, that's when it was uh, the, the lowest, the most oversold point. So if we go to the five minute RSI here, and then we go to August 14, let's go to 12 a.m. It's easier to move over. So let's see here. So again, so, again, so you see at 1 a.m. it was oversold. So, but it doesn't actually reach overboard territory until 12.45, let's say 12, yeah, 12.45 um, p.m. So at 12.45 p.m., that's when you buy. So let's go back into the one hour uh, time frame in here. So the one hour time frame for August 14th, so 12 p.m., it's only over here. So you see that it'll buy at this point. 
and then it'll buy around like $52 for LTC here. And then we'll actually sell when it reaches 58 because that's the idea. So they'll just buy and sell at this point. So this strategy should work pretty well. It won't, you know, obviously it won't hit the exact highs and lows just because sometimes, you know, it can go shoot past the overbought territory and go really much higher, even put hourly. So there's no guarantee that this strategy will hit the perfect price points. But at least what happens is the other thing it does is once it buys in over here, when, when the trend started changing, it also will check if the trend basically stalls out. So what happens is, let's say that it falls from here, it falls back down before it even reaches um, the overbought territory, it will sell at this point. So what happens is I have this thing right here, it's called the pass fall point. If the RSI falls past a certain point, it'll just sell it as kind of like a stop loss measure, making sure that you don't actually end up holding bags. Because again, what happens is if it actually doesn't reach, let's find another one where it doesn't reach the overbought target. This is a good example right here. So, so right here, let's say it buys it somewhere around here, right? So it buys around here because you know the five minute RSI tells it that it's actually overbought now at this point, and then it you know it tries to get it to the overbought territory and the hourly RSI but never reaches it. So when it actually falls down to here, so I have it currently set to sell when RSI falls to 40. So basically when it falls to 40, then it will start selling. So basically it will sell around here when it falls to 32. So you basically make some gains, but you end up losing a lot more because it never hit the top. But at least you're not holding bags because you actually sell it out and then it'll buy back in again right here, well, actually around here again because it's one, 1 p.m. and they'll sell it when it reaches overbought territory. So this is a way for it to protect itself too, so it doesn't actually let you hold bags. So that's the idea of the strategy, not guaranteeing that the strategy will work. This is something I just came up very quickly with, really just to show off the candle badger function and how you can actually use the RSI or any other indicator at multiple time frames. So again, all I had to do was add the candle badger in here, and then in the I declared the RSI five and RSI hourly as global variables. I know um, Zapper didn't do that in his. He actually did it inside the init function. It's up to you whatever you want to do it. For me, I just like it outside as a global variable so I can actually call it from anywhere in this JavaScript file. So, and then from here in the init function, I do have to set the batcher, the hourly, and the, I have to create the new batchers. And then I have to um, add the supply callbacks again so that it calls to update five and update hourly. So now you, again, you just want to clarify. So there are actually three update functions now. So it has a default strat.update function, but it also has a strat.update5 function, which will get called when the when there are actually 15, when there are actually five candles and 60 candles that are actually um, batched together. So they'll actually call it. It'll call these two functions separately at different time frames. So that's basically the main differences between a regular strategy and a strategy that uses multiple time frames. So I'll be putting this strategy on my GitHub repo so that you guys can uh, download it, play around with it. Again, there's no guarantee the strategy will work. This is just something that I just set up to show you guys how to create um, strategies using multiple time frames. So the bottom line is this. Using multiple time frames in a strategy doesn't require any modifications to get go. It simply requires a change in how the strategy should be written. The downsides of this setup is it takes much longer for the indicators to start working. Five minute candles for a standard RSI of 14 interval takes 70 minutes because you actually have the time. So 14 times five equals to 70 minutes. So it takes a little over an hour for this to work. So a daily candle, so let's say you were trying to use a daily candle function, which actually I have uh, set up uh, as a test just to see how long it takes. It actually takes 14 days for this indicator to work. So your indicator won't start working until 14 days later. I have a five minute RSI and a 24 hour RSI. The 24 hour RSI hasn't been working for the last eight, nine days. I had this running for over a week now. So by my calculations, it should work after 14 days. So downloading the historical data ahead of time should mitigate this problem, but the bug, but there's a bug in the current version of Gecko makes, that makes it harder to do. So there's currently a bug that someone reported right now. So CB is not a function. What's happening is if you have historical data, if you're using candle writer or using the input function, it actually is unable to stitch data together as having problems with the stitching and it actually crashes Gecko. Someone actually found a fix. My original fix was just to disable the candle writer. So if you disable the candle writer, like I said here, it should work. But if you're actually importing stuff first and then it won't work because you will actually have stuff in the history folder. 
So that would make it not work anyway. So what this guy found out, I think it was, um, so Nicholas uh, Panichi, he found that what you have to do is like basically install the no modules again. That's how he was able to get it to work. And I tested it and confirmed that that works. But even at this point, after I got it to work, my Feynman odd size is still zero. So it does take a while. I think, I think it does basically, again, takes about like 70 minutes. A little over 70 minutes for this to work. Then right now it's getting back to history, but for some reason it's not completely uh, getting the five minute RSI. So I was hoping I could show you guys the five minute RSI actually showing up. But anyway, guys, that's my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.